So you know all the sad story, and um, let's move on to some more lucky and positive things. Maybe uh, not as uh, in the way you expected, because uh, moving to lunchtime, uh, I will be even less diplomatic uh, than I normally am. First of all, uh, and this is not diplomatic, uh, but this is very much my subject, uh, about brands, building brands, and thinking in a new format. We will not solve our solutions if we continue to be masochistic, if, you continue, if we continue to punish the people we are building on. If you punish the audience, the masochists will like it. But every other people will say, oh, how depressing is the world? You have to change. You have to have a positive message. We, and this is the net-net, we forget what we have. We forget the passion. The passion is at the very beginning. And the truth is, another side of the truth is, that bulldogs have never been as healthy as they are today. I started judging in 1977 as the youngest judge in FCI. I had my first dog in 1964. And these are, and therefore I'm pleased to follow Viera because we share a, sim a similar passion. I judged my first Bull Mastiff club show when I was 24 in Britain, in the country of origin. And I'm currently president of the same club I judged in when I was 24. So I'm coming from the roots, and this is what we have forgot. And that's why I enjoy to follow your speech. You start to change with FCI. No. Perfect, yes, perfect. This will help your career. I am starting the change with the owner. FCI? I think the problem is FCI is not, and this is not the fault of FCI. This is, we have to understand the mechanism behind. Even FIFA is not promoting and influencing football as much as we think, because it's a grassroot hobby. And this is what they find out now. They want to go back to the grassroots. And of course, FCI is not having any impact, as we all know. When we have a scandal, it's about the picture. It's about the visual. It's about the story. It's about the narrative. It's not about an institution. So we need the institution to change. But we cannot put all the responsibility at the institution. This would be too much. And we would forget our own role and our own uh, approach. So my net-net, you know the whole, uh, the um, old saying, if I'm drowning, don't show me the water. So I would say, we are not drowning. We don't know how to swim. This is a totally different story. We have no lobby. Well, in Germany, we have 7 million dogs. So 6.5 million or 6.8 million households owning a dog. Who can have a bigger lobby? The fact that we can't mobilize our lobby or the fact that we have disenchanted with our lobby, that we have sort of segregated with our lobby, this is not the fact that we don't have a lobby. So this is a fundamental approach and a fundamental difference. And is there a difference between me as in sort of, where's the microphone? Uh, me as in so-called organized dog person towards a welfare person? Well, if I go on a dog show, sometimes I don't see any difference. I would like to stop what I see in the next ring. I would like often to stop and say, this is wrong what you are doing. And why do we put, this is not honest, why do we put all the responsibility, the judges, a moral point? Well, if I put up the wrong dog, my next weekend I have to stay at home. 
If I put up the right dog, then I can travel to where? To South Africa or to China or to wherever. So can we blame and say, now we have become very moral? No, I think we have to start much earlier and we have to regain the passion. We have to regain the net-net of our hobby. And this is the net-net of my presentation. And uh, maybe one more thing. We always talk about complexity. And the world is complex. Of course the world is complex. But in the world of Donald Trump, we say that simplicity is the new normal. People want simplicity. Tell me the net net. Why do you accept these poor dogs being groomed and groomed and groomed 25 times? I can even can't explain it to my wife, to my son. So how can I explain it to anyone else? But it's not a fault issue. And this is what I like, uh, what our, our colleague uh, said from, from Turkey, Frankfurt and Turkey. It's dishonest to say that only we have changed, everybody has changed. And they are driving factors for the negative change. And that's why we have to identify the positive factors for the positive change. We cannot isolate and say the world has stayed to be a paradise, only dog people have produced exaggerations. No, the case is totally different. And as long as we don't understand the water in which we swim, we simply discuss the fish but not the water, then we will not succeed. And others will succeed, not our enemies. Not our enemies. If we fail, not our enemies will succeed, but people with dogs and we are dog people. If dog people want to survive, they have to give a message to the people with dogs. We don't have to care about the people who don't like dogs. We are obsessed with this group. No. Why? Why should everybody love dogs? No. No need for that. So we put it on this one. Uh, I simply read to you, we had a strategy report in 2011 in FCI, and we had a very simple message, and it's, I, think, I think it still throws a hat in the ring. Never, number one, there are only three simple things, and this sets the stage, at least for my approach. Never within living memory have dogs been so numerous and so popular. At no other time have so many people around the globe spend so much time and money on their dogs as they do today and will do in the years to come in light of both further expanding urbanization as well as dog-related business opportunities. In contrast to the views of the skeptics, dogs actually belong to the winners of evolution. This is number one. Number two, on the other hand, modern civil society is pretty clear regarding its expectations of dogs and dog people. Dogs are expected to be sociable, fit, and healthy. Dog people to be competent, caring, and responsive. To ensure all these increasing societal requirements are met, more and more regulations are being imposed on the people keeping, breeding, working, training, or showing dogs. This was number two. Number three, thus the demands on the national kennel clubs to effectively address, shape or even direct these developments are increasing day by day when expertly, confidently and proactively handled. They will not endanger life with dogs, but should actually protect and empower it on the very basis of its nature-friendly, sustainable, and empathetic reasoning. I still, 
I had been involved in this, <laughs> as some of you un will know, you can still read it. I still stick to this scenario. So I'm not a skeptic. I'm talking about using the opportunities we have. And we have more opportunities than we actually use. And this is the actual issue. I've said that already. Dog people uh, sort of have isolated themselves. Dog people are not influencing the world of dogs. I'm talking about the world of dogs. Dog people are not influencing the world of dogs as much anymore as they should. People with dogs have become stronger than dog people. And this is the issue we have to address. And one example, uh, I think one learning of Vieira's presentation, and of course we have seen all these type of presentations and we know them, I've done them 25 times in my breeds. The simple fact is, and this is what we, is again not a matter of fault, breed standards have not the impact of influencing the fate of a breed as we always thought. So we have to think in different formats. Breed standards are essential, you can't do without, but you need additional formats, and this is my brand thinking approach, which I'm proposing and discussing with various people. The brand approach is simpler, more reduced to the net-net, reduced to the key message, as any brand, no brand can survive, whether it's a whiskey or a fashion brand or a politician or a country. And now I come to my late compliment, sorry, uh, uh, Ramune. Lithuania is a brand. And you have, and this is a fact and not a compliment, you have successfully positioned Lithuania as a driving force. And then a driving force then size, the gorilla wants size, of course, but dry size doesn't matter if you have the bright people, if you have a short distance between good idea and implementation, and you can all make your mistakes, please make your mistakes, because you will learn from the mistakes ten times more than from anyone, anything else. So this is your success, and to have this conference here again for the third time, this is part of your identity. And this is a success, and therefore I'm very proud and pleasure and, uh, to be here. Thank you for your very nice uh, remarks, Daiva. This leaves me, uh, obviously, both a clear vision. I think we need the bigger picture. If we sort of concentrate on the nitty-gritty things, we will miss the actual point. We will miss the enormous potential we have. Everybody in the world of communications would love to have the product which we have. I was global head of brand for Deutsche Bank. 120,000 employees out of 45 different cultures. And banks are not necessarily very popular, unless you, you have different opinions. So, but we have in Des Dog People the most wonderful product, product, of course. We have something emotional where you have immediate, we don't need any explanation. And this is, uh, and I will show you that we have, and you know it, it's simply the way to put it on a slide. We have so many drivers in society which work for us. When we often l listen to these dog presentation, dog conferences, well, I would assume that the suicide rate of the audience will high, will be high because of all these saddening messages. Why not get our ass up and work and change? And what I saw yesterday on the weekend, passionate people. They were young, but I think they don't have to be young. Give old people still a chance, please. But they were passionate. 
probably there were many of them not paid. They loved what they do. And I invented the claim for Deutsche Bank globally, passion to perform. This was for me passion to perform because it was also performance. Passion is not enough. You have to do it right and you have to register. Oh, f this time the music started too late. Next time it should start earlier. Or maybe the grass is here or the, r the ring is there. So you constantly want to improve. This is performance. But with only performance, you get 70%. With passion to perform, you get 85. You will never get 100. Don't worry. But 85 is fine. It's perfect. So, and this is the element with us living with dogs and living with dogs in such a difficult time. Why do we have seven million dogs at home? We had five when I was chairman of the German Kennel Club with 650,000 members. We had 5.5 million, now we have seven. Why? Because in a complicated world, people love to have a companion. They want to be analog in a digital world. This is a fact. Everything is working for us. So let's do it and be credible, be honest, and be open-minded and don't wait to be invited. We are invited. We are part of society. The organization is disconnected, but the dog is not disconnected. It lives every single day in a family, young family, old family, single parent, whatever combination. And my approach, and therefore um, I'm not necessarily very popular with some of my messages, I think we have to go back to the original paradigm, the original what, uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Jakel Tamas, friend Tamas addressed, where the, for instance, England is one example, but there, of course, every country has it. The original, original roots, and this is handcraft. We have delegated our sports to the technicians. Let's tell me the veteran, the DNA result, the whatever. Tell me what I should do. No. We are the experts. Who is the welfare expert, number one? We are dog people. They know they love dogs, and therefore they know about this before. And this happens in other areas. Before I bought my first uh, Bentley, afterwards I was bankrupt, Bentley of 1951. Of course, I booked or I bought all the books. I did all the research. Of course, many people don't. So give them easy platforms. Uh, lowering the barriers, make it easy to access. I got, I thought it was fantastic from the Kennel Club, uh, first uh, German member since 1992. I got the press release from the Kennel Club in London, founded 1833. And of course, very VIP people are members. They use the message that after the marriage of Harry and Meghan, there was the Beagle. And this led to a boost in interest in Beagles in the UK. And two days after, they had a press release. If you want a Beagle, and presenting to all the media, then we have the people. We have the serious breeders. So riding the wave, understanding how the water ticks in which you swim. And there are thousands of opportunities for that. Number two. So number one, I believe in skills and craft and art, not in engineering and not in borrowed media. I hate the conferences where you have 25 veterinarians and no single dark person is giving a talk. This is borrowed media. This is we delegate to another world. Academia is academia. Dog people are dog people. So we want the connection. You work for us, we work for you. But we have the logic because you are working on our terrain and we are not accepted to, uh, accept to be castrated. Sometimes we castrate ourselves and we lose what we have. Number two, of course, the pure aesthetics. And this is the fundamental thing where we have to excuse our judges. We wor work in, live in a world where the aesthetics have become isolated. Everybody's thinking of aesthetics, and then we have a 
suicide rate, we have loneliness, we have now the Prime Minister Theresa May has a Minister for Loneliness. We could say, where is the press release? Get a dog, and then you will live in a different world. This is the relational dog. This is why the dog will survive, because it's a relational dog, and not a functional dog. Our dog is a relational dog, and that's judging for the benefit of the breed. Yeah. And this automatically, in my approach, leads you to the brand wagon. Normally it's called band wagon, but I call it brand wagon. So jump on the brand wagon because the world ticks in terms of brands. If you think Lithuania is way behind, you don't spend your holidays in Lithuania. If you think, well, it's a modern, high-tech, wonderful nature, nice people, hungry people who want to change the world and make a difference, well, let's spend our holidays in Lithuania. So we live in a world where brands play the role to the good or bad. Because often the brands, of course, are much worse than reality. I, think, I don't think that bankers are all gangsters but we have the reputation to be. So we have to, perception is reality, we have to deal with that. And often the image is better than reality. Then of course we should hide reality for a while, <laughs> but to be sure that we can match with perception. And number two, as I said before, we have what you need for brand building you, we have a proposition, we have a history for each breed. We have a benefit, we have a function, we have the emotional uh, gratitudes and the relational resource. How much more difficult it is to do the brand building, to do the relation when there is no relation. Banks, for instance, is a low interest product low interest industry. Dogs are high interest, therefore everybody jumps on the killed baby. Of course they do, and they should do. We can't say the bad media. When they see some of the uh, exaggerations which we have produced, the journalist is just making the click. This is our own homemade product. So, and the last thing, it's a symbolic good. It's a symbolic good which is a driver. You can, if you have a dachshund, a wire dachshund, it's very different from a Great Dane. As a symbolic good for you when you walk on the street uh, uh, in your town. And you choose, that's what the word love marks. Last point, uh, I mentioned here Kevin Roberts. He was the CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi. He invented the word love marks. We define our selves very much with love marks. And in, uh, often in seminars or in meetings, people say, well, tell a short story about yourself, but why don't you tell us your love mark? Well, it's Bayern Munich, or it's Mastiff, or it's Lithuania, or it's Tuscany. So you have love marks where you really emotionally are connected. That my Bentley seldom starts in the morning, I forgive it because it's my love mark. I don't want a V&W which is starting every day. No, I have different, so you have, you forgive your love marks, all sorts of faults, uh, because you have an intense relation. And this is why we have love marks. Dogs are love marks, but we have for not yet, and I think this is a movement. Let's move towards building the brands, building, um, and there comes the national factor looking at Turkey, or looking at, for instance, Spain. Spain in the 80s, I went to uh, Casablanca, I went, uh, then it was in, in, uh, in Malaga, the first conference on the Spanish breeds in 1981, they said, why a Labrador? Why a Deutsche Schäferhund? Why a Rottweiler? We have national breeds at home, and let's rediscover them. They are part of our culture. They are part of our identity. 
So there is a huge amount of possibilities to reroute our hobby into the culture. And this is a great fortune which we have. And the glass for us is half full. It's not half empty. And I will make it short. Lunchtime is coming. Just to... You can read it easily. The driving factors of society, individuality, authenticity, and this is no contradiction, fake and authenticity and Trump, for instance. People think that he's authentic. He tells me that he's not paying taxes. Whoever politician has dared to say that. So I love him because he's honest. I don't love him, but for other reasons. But we have to understand the story, simplicity is, and this is, and intenseness. So to create an experience, what you do in your big ring, to create an experience, I would love to have a nice day out where is emotion involved. So these factors work for us and quality works for us. Everything which is handmade is coming back. The craftsmanship, I could tell you a story about my shoes or my jacket or everybody can tell why you wear what you wear. And it's not just price, it's always a relation to cost and benefit and what you put into it, and you want trust. And these are the key driving factors today in society, and this is what works for us. I don't want to bother you with all the details, but this shows one can sort of categorize the drivers of choice in dogs. And these factors, emotional drivers, rational drivers, it's personality, it's style, nature, heritage, companion in folk in fortune, not always in misfortune, and you have comfort and you have skills as a rational. I don't want to go into detail, but you, of course you can. W the winner is here, globally, the non-pedigree dog. Because it's a story. I can tell you why I've picked this puppy from Spain and took it and the poor puppy and how it was treated. And Yeah, I want a story. I have not so many stories in my life. So I love to have another story. And I can tell you the story. If you say, why, it's, uh, why did you choose this ugly dog? I have a wonderful story for that. So this is the winner, and they have made it. And this is what we have to take in consideration. And of course, there is a gentle giant element in the Irish Wolfhound, where they had this branding element. The gentle giant. This is a wonderful proposition, which is, comes into heritage. In Germany, everybody wants to be Irish. We want to have Irish whiskey. We, we love, yes, Ireland, of course. Nothing fake, something real, something honest, something down to earth, not fake. And if you can link this with your breed, your national, therefore I think the national breeds um, come into that in my approach to things, then you will be successful. Every yogurt nowadays tells you from which valley these strawberries come. Okay. For us, the Irish Wolfhound or any other breed is 200 years old, not just a fortnight ago. And of course, just as an example, breeds uh, where one could tell many stories. The Lhasa Apso is going to destroy its roots because when the Lhasa Apso came into the Western world through Britain, of course, it was a totally different dog. We turned, we positioned the Lhasa in the style category. Totally wrong. We will lose the true Lhasa people because then it's simply a dog with coat. There are hundreds of dogs with coat. And if you want to groom, why? Do you take a Lhasa? You should become a groomer and not a dog owner. So go back, and I'm advising several people in terms of brand, go back to the heritage. Think what is the territory of your breed. Tibetan Terrier, the heritage was not the focus. The focus was nature. People wanted nature. We had have figures that, why do you buy a Tibetan Terrier? Because it's such a natural dog. You don't have to groom it, it looks like it is. It is a happy-go-lucky dog. We start now to turn it into a long coat, bearded collie sort of thing. 
go back, position it in the nature section. There, it, this is the driver for the Tibetan Terrier. So each or the Deutsche Schäfer. Now, finally, they seem to get the message. And maybe they, uh, one should put it into style currently, but they will not survive in style. It will only survive when you have it under personality and under skills. The pug. Everybody was focused on what you said about style. Isolated it from the dog. Has nothing to do with the original pug. So go back either to heritage or to personality. This is a branding issue. Where do you want to best position your breed? And you know that yourself. Repositioning isn't witchcraft. So many things have been repositioned. And this is just one example of the German Rheinhesse wine, which was just Liebfrauenmilch, cheap and expensive, uh, cheap and, and sweet. And this was 25 years ago. And now it's the number one uh, sort of, if you want to be really uh, uh, cool, you drink Rheinhesse because they have been very innovative, new generations, they have done enormous things. So repossessioning is not witchcraft. And this is, there are so many tools and very easy how to find out what is the key of each of our brands. You have a brand essence, virtues, personality. I don't want to give you a brand lecture, but just to, to show you. And of course, in an example, uh, one of my breeds, the Mastiff, what is the, the net net of a Mastiff? Of course, you have the standard. But, and you always need the standard, but you need a second format to translate the standard as a marketing, and marketing is a, often a bad word, but a communication message into the world. And for me, it's the ancient strengths you can rely on, a mastiff you can rely on, and it's ancient, one of the oldest breeds in the world. And so you can be very specific about this. I don't want to go in all the details. What is the net net? The net net is, and this is of course the not so comfortable part, every brand thinking leads you to the why for what as is. Because you need a clear message. And if you have a crippled dog, you have neither a clear message, only that the dog is unsound or the breed is unsound. But if you want to move jointly with the breeders, with the kennel clubs, with everybody, it's a joint effort to identify what is the net net of a breed. Number two, this is a pushing, this is an engaging process. This is not a punishing process. The punishing processes won't work. This is at least my, my message today. The engaging processes, they do work. And of course, when you have now your Lithuanian hound, yeah, what is, what, what is Lithuanian in your hound? And this would lead you to all Lithuanian history. So this is a, a, a sort of one form of identification. And what is specific among the 300 breeds? We don't need another breed. But there is maybe the space for another breed if you have the message for this breed. And then we have forgotten breeds like the German Pincher or uh, some of our popular breeds are going down because they have no message. The Doberman. Why is the Doberman not popular anymore? It's forgotten. But why? The dog hasn't changed because there is no message and people don't care. And they don't understand the water in which we swim. And this leads me again, therefore I'm the Mr. Positive. <laughs> the positive and sustainable target features only. For brand building you need the positive things only. And the rest is what you have in mind. And your credible things only. And this requests a holistic approach, not just an aesthetic approach, and not just a health approach, but a much bigger one. And this gives, obviously, the breeds of origin, the countries of origin, a new role, I think a fundamental role, and extra opportunities beyond the standard. That's why brand is beyond the standard. Extra challenges. Uh, what Tamar said, do we have brand building skills? in our national kennel clubs. Yes, 
in some we have. And often in the smaller ones we have, in the bigger ones we don't, because they think, oh, I'm a comfortable position. But then they realize that German shepherds are down from 100,000 to 80,000. Well, this, there must be a reason for that. And of course, extra resources, the way to cooperate. So they are all sort of team building efforts, of workshops, of a joint effort uh, uh, possible. And finally, um, it's about proactive management of something we are faced with anyway. The question is, do we get it done in our way? Do we go into the ring and fight? Or do we leave it for others to decide? And number two, and this will address and target our uh, reputational factors. And finally, I think it will give us lost ground as dog people versus people with dogs. Thank you.